Ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, to start off the press conference this evening, I hereby call upon Dr. Sri Hishamuddin Tanusin, Acting Minister of Transport, to deliver his statement. Sir, if you please do us the honor. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been 69 days since MH370 went missing. After more than nine weeks, the search has now entered a transition phase, prioritizing deep sea search. Since the last time I held a press conference in Kuala Lumpur, along with China and Australia, we have met and agreed upon the next course of action, which will be jointly undertaken. Reiterating what the Deputy Prime Minister of Australia, Honorable Warren Trust, said when we met in Canberra last week, we have entered a new difficult phase, which brings with it new challenges, which we will overcome together. As regards the tripartite meeting in Canberra, I have briefed the Malaysian Cabinet yesterday on the outcome of the meeting and it has been deliberated. I now have the mandate to announce that the details of the transition phase have been approved by the Malaysian government. As previously mentioned, our three nations have agreed that the search operation has entered a transition phase prioritizing deep sea search. In this context, the air and surface search has been suspended. However, an Australian P3 Orion and naval ships from Malaysia, Australia, and the People's Republic of China remain on standby in Perth for any eventuality. In the meantime, subsurface search using the Bluefin 21 will ensure the continuation of previous efforts. During this transition phase, three main priorities, and they are one, to reanalyze all data to verify a more accurate search area. This analysis will be conducted by the group of experts together with IMASET. Secondly, to conduct a bathymetric survey involving an extensive mapping of the seabed. And thirdly, to conduct a search operation by identifying and deploying the relevant towed and autonomous underwater vehicles, AUV, required for the terrain. It is important that a bathymetric survey and deep water search needs to be seamless. In the meeting, we also agreed to conduct weekly conferences via video teleconferencing between representatives of the three nations to discuss the latest developments regarding the search operation. This will commence next Monday, the 19th of May. On asset deployment, with regards to asset deployment, the tripartite meeting has agreed that specific assets will be required for the new phase of the search, and we are jointly finalizing the acquisition process. Prior to that, a comprehensive bathymetric survey will be undertaken, and this is so that experts can better understand the seabed terrain to ensure the autonomous underwater vehicles, the AUVs, and deep water towed site scan sonars, which are very expensive and scarce, are safely deployed. The same knowledge of the ocean floor will be required for the operation of the remotely operated vehicles, the ROVs. The meeting also confirmed that procurement arrangements for the use of commercial contractors will be undertaken by Australia in, consultant, in consultation with Malaysia. This will reinforce our strong bilateral relationship and will enhance the coordination of activities for the overall search. The procurement process will be done through an open or limited tender process based on Commonwealth standards to facilitate cost effectiveness and best value for money. Malaysia and China will be consulted and detailed briefings will be provided at each step of the process. The meeting also emphasized the requirement that these contracts be put in place as soon as possible to ensure that search operations are not interrupted. Besides the commercial assets, Malaysia and China are also assigning specific assets for operations in the new phase. On that note, Malaysia is in the process of acquiring related assets from Petronas, Sapura Kinchana, Fausted and DevTech. It should be noted that any services that will be or may be provided by government agencies of the three nations or other friendly nations will be complementary to the services and contribute to cost savings. Next of kin, our three nations have also agreed to a proposed reception program for any planned visit for the next of kin to Perth. In the event of confirmation of the final resting place of MH370, 
or identification of debris related to MH370. It was agreed that any visit will take place between two to four weeks upon confirmation. Australia has agreed to provide the necessary support and information to the next of kin in terms of entry requirements to ensure that travel in and out of Australia are well taken care of. The Western Australian Government will take a lead role in organising services according to their traditions and religions and facilitate arrangements for basic needs of the next of kin during their stay in Australia. Malaysian Airlines will be responsible for travel arrangements for the next of kin from Malaysia and all other countries. The airline will also retain broad responsibility for their support during their visit, including flights, accommodation, transportation and family support. The Chinese government has also given the assurance that they will continue to actively facilitate and support matters relating to the Chinese next of kin. We understand the anguish that the families are going through and I can assure you that their interests have always been paramount in our considerations thus far. Technical, with regards to the technical committee, the establishment of the international investigation team has fed well with the International Civil Aviation Organization, the international aviation community, and the next of kin. The announcement of the establishment of the international investigation team have assured them that the investigation would be conducted by an independent, competent, and credible team in accordance with Annex 13, Aircraft Accident and Incident Investigation, the Chicago Convention. On Communications Coordination and Media Committee, in the Malaysian Cabinet meeting yesterday, the Malaysian Cabinet has agreed on establishing a special, specialized communication coordination and media committee, which will be headed by Jailani Johari, the Deputy Minister for Communication and Multimedia. The committee will be focusing on streamlining and strengthening effective communications between the three nations, families of those on board MH370 and other related stakeholders. This is to ensure the release of timely and transparent information which is consistent with our effort to improve communications related to this incident. As the negotiation process about further details of the operation are expected to continue for the next one or two months, Malaysia is placing a special team in Canberra which include representatives from all the committees to represent Malaysia during this period. This special team will coordinate any aspects related to the operations between Malaysia and Australia. This team will comprise of senior officials from the four respective ministerial committees. First Admiral Hanafiah bin Hassan and Colonel Hassan bin Lokman will represent the Asset Deployment Committee to discuss aspects of acquisition of assets. Captain Mio Mohammad Noor Badrisha from the Civil Aviation Department will represent the Technical Committee to discuss data analysis and investigative matters. And His Excellency Dato Zainal Abidin Ahmad, the Malaysian High Commissioner in Canberra, will represent the Next of Kin Committee to discuss aspects relating to the Next of Kin management. Two officers from the newly established Communications and Media Committee will also be placed along with the team for media affairs. To update you, a part of the team are already in Australia as we speak. Ladies and gentlemen, I understand that the disappearance of MH370 has caused terrible anguish for the families. As pointed out by the Malaysian Prime Minister, the lack of definitive evidence combining with all the speculation that has been going around has made this all the more difficult to bear. The best we can offer at this point in time is our personal assurance that Malaysia will keep searching for the plane for as long as it takes. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, now we'll have the floor is now open for Q&A. We'll start with the local media first. Yes. First row. Yes, in the middle, please. Datuk Sri Syafiq Ahmad Nibir Bintarian, uh, Australia dah mengumumkan bajet sebanyak 83 juta Australian dollar. Adakah itu kos keseluruhan? Uh, bagaimana pula dengan kos Malaysia dan adakah rakan-rakan kita di luar sana yang ada membantu daripada segi kewangan? Bajet yang diumumkan oleh Australia merupakan ceiling 
ia bukan merupakan uh, jumlah yang sebenar. Ini uh, sebahagian daripada uh, keperluan undang-undang yang ada uh, di uh, Australia. Keduanya, saya dah nyatakan dahulu dalam pasal baru ni. Kalau sebelum ini uh, tidak ada perkiraan dari segi uh, jumlah uh, kos uh, untuk adil kepada Australia, penting untuk kita kongsi bersama uh, apa dua keperluan uh, untuk lihat ke, lihat ke hadapan. Tetapi jumlah yang uh, sepatutnya dibiayai oleh Malaysia belum dapat kita tentukan lagi kerana yang penting ialah pertamanya untuk mengenal pasti lokasi yang perlu kita cari kedua aset yang diperlukan ketiga aset-aset yang boleh dibekalkan mungkin daripada uh, kerajaan atau daripada tahap tentera yang tidak uh, menyentuh kepada commercial consideration dan akhir sekali saya boleh mengesahkan bahawa ada pihak-pihak ketiga yang uh, telah uh, menunjukkan uh, kesanggupan mereka untuk membantu kalau sekiranya uh, carian ini uh, memerlukan uh, pembiayaan lebih daripada apa kemampuan kita. Tetapi saya nak tekankan di sini dengan jumlah yang ada ini uh, kita akan teruskan uh, carian kita dan lebih ramai tampil ke hadapan lebih cepat atau lebih uh, efektif uh, ke, uh, kemampuan kita untuk memastikan uh, kejayaan. Sebab itu saya harap bahawa kerjasama daripada pihak-pihak ketiga yang kita lihat uh, di peringkat pasar pertama kedua uh, dalam SAR ini uh, akan sama juga komitmen dalam pasar baru ini. Ya. Yeah. Uh, yang pihak ketiga belum saya boleh umumkan tetapi uh, saya esok akan ke UAE bersama-sama dengan yang amat berhormat Perdana Menteri dan uh, awal minggu depan ada perjumpaan dan mesyuarat Menteri-Menteri Pertahanan uh, ASEAN di Myanmar dan uh, seperti uh, semua maklum uh, dalam dua minggu lagi uh, yang Mak Bawah Pada Menteri akan membuat uh, lawatan rasmi ke China jadi semua ini akan diambil kira dan saya percaya bahawa um, perkara MH370 ini akan dibincangkan di semua lawatan-lawatan berkenaan Dato' Sri, saya sahaja nak tanya-tanya. Dato' Sri, saya nak tanya, memandangkan apa yang telah difokuskan tadi adalah misi pencarian yang lebih kepada um, kawasan di dalam laut. Kita nak tahu berapakah jumlah AUV sebenarnya yang dikerahkan buat ketika ini dan bagaimana dengan perkembangan ping yang pertama dalam operasi mencari? Um, berhubung kait dengan maklumat ping tadi, uh, itu merupakan lead yang terbaik yang kita ada. Dan uh, dengan Ocean Shield dan Bluefin 21 yang sedia ada, uh, tumpuan uh, difokuskan kepada kawasan-kawasan ping yang belum kita membuat uh, carian. Ping pertama yang kita buat tu bersandarkan kepada signal yang uh, paling uh, kuat pada ketika itu. Tetapi dalam fasa baru ini, uh, penting pakar-pakar yang sekarang ini berada di Canberra untuk mengenal pasti bersama-sama dengan uh, Inmarsat dan pakar-pakar lain untuk menentukan lokasi yang sebenarnya supaya aset-aset yang sedia ada ini dapat uh, di, dikerahkan dan kalau sekiranya lebih banyak aset dapat kita kumpulkan lebih cepat uh, tempoh dan juga um, gerakan yang boleh kita lakukan ini sedang diaturkan sekarang tetapi yang paling penting sekarang ni selepas perjumpaan kita di Canberra ialah untuk menentukan struktur daripada tiga negara ni dapat kita tetapkan supaya perjalanan kita ni tidak ada kekangan dalam kita melihat ke hadapan. Um, hi, I'm Sulia from Astrawani. Um, has um, the investigation team looked into uh, due residence claim about the missing plane that was said to be in the Bay of Bengal? And also now that we are entering um, 69 days already and nothing has been found in that area, are you planning to um, you know, comb the area again or are you looking to searching the other area? In fact, the Bay of Bengal issue, uh, we have uh, used and asked uh, the assistance of the Bangladeshi military and also some assistance from India. And uh, as announced earlier, we have not found anything 
Um, right now, if you want to go into a uh, more detailed search, uh, it will involve commercial uh, assets. And we have um, vessels that are able to do it, but uh, that will be at the expense of time spent for the search. And secondly, it's going to be expensive. So in deciding whether we're going to go further into speculation on the Bay of Bengal, I'll leave it to the experts to, to advise me accordingly because it's going to cost money, it's going to affect the operations on the next phase, and who is going to be responsible if at the end of the search the results are negative. Yes, yes. keluarga daripada China setahu saya tidak ada tetapi uh, wakil daripada jawatan kuasa uh, yang telah pun diwujudkan uh, Dato' Amzah tak dapat bersama hari ini uh, biarlah mereka mengesahkan uh, apa yang ditanya tadi berhubung kait dengan uh, raw data daripada Masyad seperti apa yang Angus Houston telah menyatakan baru-baru ini di Canberra bahawa raw data ni tidak berada di dalam tangan MAS atau Malaysia ataupun Australia ianya berada di dalam tangan Inmaset jadi apa jua uh, perkara yang perlu disahkan uh, atau uh, perlu didedahkan uh, ianya hanya boleh didedahkan oleh Inmaset itu sendiri Thank okay. you, yes please Terima kasih perbincangan kerajaan dengan uh, I mean those uh, company uh, syarikat seperti uh, Petronas, Lausnik mereka ok right. yeah, uh, perbincangan uh, di antara kita dengan pihak Petronas dan beberapa syarikat-syarikat uh, uh, yang lain seperti Devtek uh, Sapura Kencana sedang pun uh, berjalan dengan begitu lancar dan ada uh, Setakat ini Petronas telah memberikan komitmen yang sungguh-sungguh untuk memberikan uh, sekurang-kurangnya dua set uh, alat AUV untuk membantu operasi pencarian. Yes. Yes. Well, 
Saya merit kepada Abi Berita Saya ada dua soalan lah uh, Kita sudah tahu semalam Abi Berita Sri meminta pengawal Sri yang penerbangan anak bangsa Yang memasang uh, pengesan masa sebenar Jadi adakah uh, pihak uh, kementerian Ada tak pihak kementerian setiap ini Bila malu balas daripada uh, penerbangan anak bangsa sendiri Terutama dari pihak komersial Yang kedua uh, berkenaan dengan uh, Resanisan uh, staff MS yang 300 orang itu mungkin sebab kita tahu MS adalah uh, uh, Pemerintah Sri Kami sudah tahu uh, Perletakan jawatan 300 staff MS Boleh ulang balik tak dua-dua soalan tadi? Saya ya, tak tahu Ya, ok, ya, kamu semalam Ok, pada Bri sendiri meminta Pengawal seria uh, Penerbangan anak bangsa memasang pengesan masa sebenar Semalam Ok, ada tak pihak kementerian yang menerima malu balas daripada Global Atletik Global Atletik Semalam Dan yang kedua adalah berkenaan dengan Perletakan 300 staff MS Perletakan jawatan MS Yang perletakan jawatan MS tu Kita tunggu AJ hadir dalam PC kita Tetapi yang soalan pertama tu Biar Dato' Azhar jawab Pihak International Civil Liberation Organization Ada menganjurkan Dua hari Uh, conference di Montreal untuk uh, melihat atau untuk uh, uh, they try to establish the real time tracking of commercial aircraft atau real time uh, masa yang yang uh, sepatutnya untuk aircraft aircraft commercial dan uh, dalam dalam uh, laporan tersebut AKO ada mengumumkan satu pasukan satu task force untuk melihat bagaimana perkara ini dapat dipraktikkan, dapat dilakukan, dapat digunakan oleh komersial komersial aircraft. Jadi belum lagi ada keputusan mutamat, belum lagi ada direktif uh, yang dikeluarkan oleh oleh AKU. Dia masih lagi sedang mengkaji perkara ini dengan sedalamnya. Dan uh, Malaysia pun ada uh, menyatakan uh, satu recommendation safety link Malaysia dalam our preliminary report yang dikeluarkan yang dihantar kepada AKU. Okay, now we'll go to the forum here. Okay, last question from you. Okay, I'm Aslan from NSD. Okay, uh, how did the team determine the exact details, including latitude and the details you released? Because it was said before, MRS said it was just a communication satellite. And uh, that was why it could only reveal the path, right? Not south or north. Did, did you have a question? Okay, I'll repeat it. Uh, how did the team, the investigation team, determine the exact details, including the latitude in the details that was released before? Because it was because ImageSat is only a communication satellite, right? So you can't determine whether it's going north or south. But the information from ImageSat was later confirmed, and this is from my press releases by all the other agencies, NTSB, AIB, CAC. Uh, these uh, confirmed uh, the findings, but uh, the issue on Imaset right now is not about uh, the decision. It is about uh, revealing the raw data. And as Angus Houston mentioned uh, earlier in Canberra uh, two days ago, uh, the raw data is with Imaset, not with Malaysia, not with Australia, not with MAS. So if there is any request for this raw data to be made available uh, to the public, it must be made to Imaset. Okay, now we go to the floor. Yes, sir. Could somebody please pass the mic over to him, please? Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mr. Good evening. Uh, Matsika and Douglas with two questions. One is just an English translation of the rule of the health that you're going to get from uh, Sakura in China and Man in the Brunas. Uh, I'm sorry, the Particularly by Petronas, uh, they are now uh, looking at Totsona uh, uh, and also ROV uh, to be deployed as the Malaysian assets. Uh, then, uh, of course, Sapra Pechana is also offering the um, multi-beam echo sounder. Uh, that will be still under our consideration. 
and uh, with that, uh, after valuation and also tender, then we will know which asset will be deployed. But following the uh, sequence that has been decided between the three nations, China, Australia and Malaysia, our transition phase would be to concentrate on the bathymetric survey of the ocean floor and additional autonomous underwater vehicles, AUVs, and also now the deep water towed side scan sonar, which uh, is available and in the hands of very few. And this is something that I'll be discussing um, with United States. And uh, in, in the end of the month, in a couple of weeks' time, I'll be raising that with Sec Secretary Hegel uh, when I meet him in Singapore during the Shangri-La Dialogue. I think uh, as far as MAS is concerned, uh, that's pretty, that's covered and that's already mentioned to the next of kin. I think they are in the, in the process of dispersing some of the uh, advancement. I, I didn't quite catch your question. Yes, in relation, uh, relation government, relation government assistance to MAS, other than in dollars and cents. No, no, no. The, whether there is a nation assistance to MAS? Nation government assistance to MAS? No. Okay. Next is, yes, in front here. Hi. Hi. Okay. Uh, Namaste, Abatou. Uh, we understand um, the expert, a group of experts, uh, is re-analyzed the Massad data. So far, there any new outcome? And the second question was, after the meeting in Canberra, so far, the SAR team, which Malaysia, Australia, and China, is still believe the flight was entered in southern sub-China, India. Thank you. Um, that is why the meeting in Canberra was so important. Uh, to get uh, these three uh, countries to work seamlessly together. And the analysis, the work includes available data to confirm the best search area, the acquisition of bathymetric analysis capability to survey the search area, the acquisition of subsurface search assets to scan the entire agreed search area, which requires us to look back at the data that is available. And this is uh, work uh, in progress. And because it involves three nations, and it involves all the experts, so it is uh, it's very unlikely that any speculation that we are not transparent on that we are not using the best data available um, uh, can be uh, 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 thrown or alleged at the party's concern. So since last week, it is very important for us to get the structure in place, as I answered in Malay, in Bahasa just now, to get the structure in place, both in Malaysia and in Canberra, because they're moving the operations from Perth to Canberra. And it's also to the linking up between the three nations, so that whatever information that we reveal on the issue of analyzing again the data that's available, whether it's satellite, whether it is radar, whether it is uh, based on ping uh, signals, uh, that is, um, goes out in real time, goes out with confirmation and verification by the three countries that are involved directly with the experts' involvement, which uh, I believe is already uh, ongoing right now. Okay. Yes, yes, sir. From CCTV. Uh, are you going to China with the Prime Minister Najib uh, and uh, what will you be discussing with the Chinese authorities about the next phase of uh, search and rescue? Thank you. Yes, uh, as you know, the uh, visit to China is really to commemorate and to celebrate 40 years of bilateral uh, diplomatic relations between Malaysia and China. And uh, of course, we cannot avoid uh, the, the issue of uh, MH370. 
I believe that uh, our Prime Minister will be meeting up with all the leadership uh, in China. And I think the main issue right now is really not on the issue of the next of kin, which has been uh, um, resolved it, 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 structure-wise. Uh, and that's with the cooperation of the Chinese government. And I have to thank them for that cooperation. It's really the next phase, which is the deployment of assets. And this is something that uh, requires the very highest level of leadership between the two prime ministers to discuss uh, what sort of assets that the, the, the Chinese uh, government would deploy. Secondly, um, what commercial entities in China could assist us in, in deploying uh, in the next phase. And finally, the research institutes uh, uh, in China that have got these assets. But these are very specific, and uh, I, I think that will be part of the discussions um, that's going to take place. And yes, I am going with the Prime Minister. Yes, on the left is yes. Good evening, Mr. Richard Paddock with the Wall Street Journal. Hi. Uh, the documents released by the government nearly two weeks ago revealed a high degree of miscommunication and confusion among the civilian air controllers, military radar operator and the airlines. First, have you taken any disciplinary action in this regard? And second, what steps have you taken to ensure that this kind of miscommunication does not occur again? Well, I think let the uh, investigations take place. I just uh, received the uh, latest reports on internal investigations by the, uh, by the Air Force. Uh, we've got this panel of experts investigation and as far as Wall Street Journal is concerned, our Prime Minister gave you an exclusive uh, only a few days ago. So basically, I think that answers basically what you've asked. Okay, one last question. Yes, Thank you. Could you pass him another mic, please? Thank you. Do you have any idea how much of money Malaysia has spent so far? How much? What? How much of money has Malaysia spent so far? Well, to be honest uh, and to be very candid, and I'm very touched, hardly anything. Um, considering nearly the whole fleet of P3 Orions, um, the illusion from China and the Poseidon, the P8s, the vessels, uh, ranging from the icebreaker, Zulong, um, at the first phase. Um, I think uh, as far as Malaysia, what we have incurred is only the cost of deploying uh, our military assets, which are already there already. So basically, we, I take this opportunity to, to thank everybody who has been with us um, in the earlier phase of our search. And that has not cost us anything at all considering the, this happens to be the largest uh, search uh, in the history of aviation. And the second phase? Uh, sorry? So the actual cost for Malaysia will come the actual cost? The eventual cost will depend very much on how we proceed. Uh, it depends very much on the area that we're going to search. Very, it depends very much on the assets that's available. It depends very much on the people uh, and the countries that come forward to assist us with the assets that are specific. But what is important that we have established since last week is to uh, get the experts um, to actually uh, identify the sort of assets that is required, the procedures in which we're going to um, deploy these assets, whether it's commercial, whether it's government, whether it's research, and getting as many people on board as possible. And I think that is something that we cannot decide today because at the end of the day, um, the committees that are set up here in Kuala Lumpur will be replicated in Beijing. It is being done in Canberra. And if this is a seamless effort, um, I think that we, we will be on the right track. Transparent, efficient, and also able to achieve uh, what we set out to do which at the end of the day is to find MH370. Okay, with that, ladies and gentlemen, we conclude the session for today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.